I received a question as to how we can relate better to Jesus Christ. There are so many interpretations, so much being said about him. How can we possibly know? How can we really follow the true Christ? And, well, I wish I had a very easy answer to that, but it is not so easy. In general, I usually say to people, go to the source. And um, for many teachings, we have a source. There are places they came from, there are egregores which inspired these ideas. Um, and besides the people, also the place where the impulse was strongest, so the temples, the sites of uh, miracles or teachings, they often also still hold that uh, that knowledge or that original divine spark is there. So by visiting holy places we can also find back the very inspiration which created this movement. So going to yeah, great spiritual centers, um, read from antiquity, antiquity like the pyramids, uh, Stonehenge, um, Karnak, um, we can find back these uh, impulses. And also if you travel to the Holy Land and um, go to Jerusalem, you can find many of these places where you could say the veil between our daily world and the divine uh, is very thin. And there are also um, modern holy places, um, like for instance in uh, St. Petersburg, where the temples still, in a way, are breathing um, this divine impulse into our world, where it is very accessible, where we can be inspired. And also a lesser holy place, like for instance a little altar at home, can already help for this divine impulse to become a little bit more easily um, caught by us down here. To be able to catch an impulse though, we also have to be able to receive it. We have to be way, attuned to it. And this is different. So for instance, for me to spend some time in Egypt was um, really um, a landslide, an earth-shattering experience for me. Um, I was very attuned to the spiritual impulses which were yeah, which in a way created um, that ancient civilization and to, uh, by being in these places I could feel these impulses and these impulses came to me very strongly and they in a way reinvigorated me and they awakened a lot of old knowledge and recreated that old knowledge in a new mold uh, within my own being. But when it comes to the impulses of Jesus Christ, I have to admit I'm uh, not at, as capable um, in receiving uh, these impulses as I am in receiving these um, yeah, more ancient or more primitive, you could say, impulses of um, the Druidic and uh, Paganistic society. So I cannot claim to be an expert on the, on the Christ impulse at all. Um, but I'm also aware of my own limitations, like do I speak with, with angels? No. Do angels sometimes have they chosen to uh, yeah, command me? Yes. Does that make me an expert on Christ? No because angels are not Christian beings. Angels are servants of the divine and Christianity is but a form and they are not interested in form. Angels have also spoken to non-Christians. So it's important to realize that this divide which is often created, like only a person who has heard Christ or has been baptized or is one with the body of Christ, only they can enter heaven or be saved. Um, this is actually a fallacy. 
these beings make no distinction and there are in fact a great many angels are active in yeah what would be called uh, places of yeah, paganism so to say that yeah um, paganism is in a way opposed to um, the the later forms of religion um, such as uh, um, um, Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam, no. The same powers which ruled in, in paganistic powers except um, often the higher impulses of Christianity, Judaism and uh, Islam. The problem is that not all powers of Judaism, Christianity and Islam honor their roots or accept these powers which existed before. So they're in a way um, rebelling against their own roots, uh, rebelling against their own source and denying the divinity of the angels or other powers which uh, have served humanity and the divine in those places. So they're in a way, you could say, heretics. And it's quite funny in a way to, um, because of course within Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam there is a very strong law against heresies that heretics should be punished, should be killed, should be burned for not following um, the true way while they themselves are heretics and not following the true way when it comes uh, to these matters. And it is in a way also a necessity because um, Islam and Christianity were in a way based upon a revolution, the revolution caused by Christ, the revolution caused by the Prophet Muhammad. And to create a revolution you have to in a way make a distinction between what is old, what is new, what is in a way suitable for that time and period and will help humanity to move onward and what is no longer suitable. So do these great prophets make a distinction? Yes, they very much do and they try to guide us to tell us like okay leave the old behind, embrace the new. And is it a good thing to do? Yes because we need to move onward. So I don't believe we should, yeah, in a way, get stuck forever and ever into, into paganism. But we should also acknowledge that, in a way, paganism is the very structure upon which our modern day religions are built. And also that many of these principles which are trying to, and powers which are trying to guide humanity forward are still acting upon us and in a way to deny our, our forefathers, to deny our teachers and to deny the voice of the divine which is trying to guide us and to help us in these places and through these more ancient traditions. Um, it is to yeah, deny the voice of progress, it is deny, to deny the foundations of our spiritual uh, law, our spiritual principles and blatantly wrong. Uh, we should just be very um, aware of that there is an evolution and we should find our proper step on that evolutionary ladder so that we are in a way in touch with powers um, which are matching our own level. So Christianity for me is a level which is too high. I cannot completely comprehend the Christ impulse. I cannot complete, completely comprehend um, the impulse which Muhammad uh, gave to the world. I find it slightly easier actually to work with the impulse of Muhammad than of Christ. That doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge them as great teachers, as great prophets who are bringing the word of God to us, who are renewing our traditions, who are guiding us forward. 
and I have a great respect for both uh, uh, Muhammad uh, and Christ and also for Moses who had a similar role before them in, in a way creating a new uh, floor on the building on the great temple you could say of religion so you could say like gosh we need a foundation and Muhammad created uh, uh, sorry um, Moses created this foundation then yeah you need the floors to be built on top of that and on top of that and on top of that so that we can reach higher and higher states and that we in a way are taught again and again by yeah, people sent by the divine world to use these yeah, uh, divine principles in ways which benefit our spiritual development rather than hamper us because power in itself is neutral, knowledge in itself is neutral. It is how we use it and how we use it in uh, relationship to our own individual path and our own individual inspiration and guidance that makes it either a blessing or a curse upon us. And to help us with this, again and again, um, we find that teachers come to us. Uh, one man once said um, that, uh, speaking about the Christian church, the Christian church is renewed by the blood of saints and martyrs. And it is true, because also in interpreting Christianity, we make mistakes. We are humans, we are fallible. And again and again, saints are born and people are martyred um, because they try to show us our mistakes. They try to improve our, yeah, our understanding of spiritual progress, of spiritual laws, of how to apply the principles of, in this case, Christianity. But the truth, it is true for all religions. Within every religion there are great teachers and there are also divinely inspired teachers and powers who help them to move forward. And in my own personal life I have had a lot of benefit from um, praying to saints and slowly but surely by interacting with these saints I may one day, probably not in this incarnation, but maybe in some future incarnation, uh, find myself to become able to comprehend the teachings of Christ fully, or the teachings of Muhammad fully, or the teachings of Buddha fully. But as I am, um, I would like to know more about these great teachings, because I know that they are beyond me, and I try to learn more about them and to approach um, yeah, that, in a way, ideal form of uh, uh, that you could say grail which can receive the divine impulse which in a way the great prophets, the great saints and especially Jesus was. So for me he is in a way um, the true leader who in a way goes ahead and does things and shows me that uh, it is possible to do certain things which I'm not capable of doing myself he shows me that things which are were inconceivable for me are in a way possible and within my reach. So for me it's very inspiring. He's a true leader who goes before me and shows the steps of the way. Um, am I able to follow him? Well, I try, but my capability of following in his footsteps is, uh, well, very, very limited. And I think the, tr the same is also true for uh, a student which, who posed this question, like, how do we know, how can we follow Christ, like, he is beyond us, yes, and spiritual masters are generally beyond us because we're not great spiritual masters ourselves, and even if we are great spiritual masters ourselves, there are greater spiritual masters than ourselves, and course we can try to become the greatest spiritual master in history and it's not a bad thing to try but it's not an easy thing to accomplish either. So I think it's important to try to develop a good technique of being properly guided and properly inspired by these masters. The 
first thing to do is in a way to um, distinguish between the value of uh, form and the value of essence. So within every religion there is a lot of form, there are laws on how to perform a certain ritual, um, there are certain canonized forms of prayer, of chanting, of uh, postures. Um, there's a whole wisdom and tradition on when to perform which ritual, how to perform which prayer, uh, which blessings to give to your house, your pets, your um, family members. To, and all these forms help us to communicate with the higher world. So um, these forms are known in the higher world. So if I pronounce a certain phrase in Sanskrit, if I pronounce a certain prayer, there are other spirits which are connected to these traditions who will know like, gosh, I see a little blinking warning light. Somebody is wanting my attention, like um, kind of like a fire alarm. There's something wrong. Uh, a higher power needs to intervene there. So using these uh, rituals, uh, prayers, doing things in a ritualistic manner um, really helps us to connect to these powers which have been a part of the tradition to our ancestors who have gone before us in this tradition and also to the spirits which are devoted to guiding people in that tradition and depending on what tradition you feel most close to you will in a way send off different signals and you will have also a different quality of connection so for me in a way to uh, if I would send up a pagan signal um, which can be picked up by a nature spirit, I expect there will be a very strong response because I'm very visible, I'm very open for connecting to that uh, pagan spirit. So if I'm calling out, I'm in a way shouting by beating my drum and dancing in a shamanic fashion, then the spirits around will hear me very clearly and will say like, gosh, okay, let's go to, uh, to see what's going on because I hear the call, somebody's calling me. If, for instance, I would go into a tradition I have less roots in, um, for instance Hinduism, I can yeah, work with, with mantras, do the correct postures and will I be heard? Yes. Um, but not as loudly because yes, I'm sending signals at that vibration and I am connected to that tradition as well, but not as strongly as some of the other practitioners. Um, so I can expect the response of that uh, religion to be, yeah, relatively speaking, compared to other practitioners, less, while my response, while doing something paganistic relatively to other practitioners, to be more, because I'm more one with uh, that group, because I've spent more incarnations within that group, and. I'm more skilled in communicating, I've learned that language better. So it's important to understand what in a way, languages you know, what traditions are easy for you, and what new languages you are trying to learn or become better at, like I'm becoming better in my life in communicating with the, with the Vedic powers. I'm also improving my communication with the, um, with the Semitic powers. And that doesn't mean that within a single lifetime I can become proficient also with communicating with nature. It took me several lifetimes to get to the level of communication where I am now. And I expect it will take me quite a few lifetimes to become more proficient or approach a certain level which is comparable to my uh, paganistic uh, ability to communicate within the uh, Semitic religions. So I've led a few lives being devoted to, uh, well, in my case, uh, Christianity. But yeah, those three lifetimes don't really compare to the amount of lifetimes I've spent um, working with uh, pagan traditions. So slowly but surely it is building up. And I think also if you want to work with the Christ impulse, you should 
look upon it that way. Um, find the voice of the divine which is most responsive to you, which is most accessible to you. And doesn't mean that paganism is better than Christianity. No, it is different. And if you know where your spirit wants to go, and you know what your foundations are, then you have both, you could say, your project you, are, you want to work with, and you have the things you are skilled in and you can fall back upon. So for me, if I just want to do something, I can easily go back to my more nature-based skills and use them. Yeah, but for my own spiritual progress, keeping on working with only these nature-based powers is not progress for me. That's stagnation. I'm just rechewing, rehashing what I already know. And Christianity is something exciting and new. I've only been experiencing it for yeah, maybe a thousand years or so. Um, and I think the same is true for most of us. We don't have that long of an experience with Christ. Um, so it, you shouldn't blame yourself for not being able to understand or to grasp the entirety of Christ or the entirety of the Christian tradition for that matter. So to move forward, like there's the language of form, but there's also the essence. And to try to find the essence of Christianity, I think it's best to look at the, in a way, the best students in the class. So the great Christian masters, the great Christian saints, like how they managed to receive the Christ impulse. And to receive the Christ impulse is not a process which you can just decide to do, like, okay, um, let's open myself up and receive the Christ impulse. It is a combination. We need to focus on, in a way, the energy, which is yeah, the Christ impulse. Um, Jesus was, in a way, a manifestation of that energy. And so is, in a way, also the different saints and holy men and women and spiritual masters and mistresses. Um, and even egregores, which are inspired by the Christ impulse. Um, all these different forms can help us to work with this Christ impulse, and also the Christ impulse itself is again part of the Holy Spirit, which is in a way the, um, the feminine side of the divine within our universe. And it is through the Holy Spirit that we 